G'day guys, we're here today with Josh's Bone Stock VX Commodore. Alright, it's not actually Bone Stock, but it is turbo and we're going to have a look at it today. He's done a turbo swap from a Borg Warner S480 down to an S366 and we're going to talk about how that applies to you and what it's like on the street now. Alright, let's have a look under here. Oh, it's not an Ecotech. <laughs> right, so this is Josh's VX Commodore. It's a factory LS1. Uh, he's got a standard bottom end. Uh, heads have never been lifted, but he has a VCM 710 cam, yep. if that's correct. Uh, it's a Borg Warner S366. It's a genuine turbo. Uh, three and a half inch dump pipe into a twin two and a half inch yep. exhaust, I believe. Yep. yep, he's got three inch intercooler piping. Uh, Plasma Man, 1200 horsepower intercooler down here. It's got a bunch of little sensors on it. It's got eBoost 2. Uh, the car looks pretty much standard from the outside, which I'll show you here. You can see it's pretty unassuming and it is definitely a pretty awesome sleeper. Uh, we went for a drive in it to get down here and it was pretty impressive. But yeah, as you can see, you'd probably get pulled over by the police and they wouldn't bat an eyelid at it. But uh, under the bonnet's a, another story. Um, so Josh has just gone from a Borg Warner S480 to the smaller turbo here and he was having a lot of trouble building boost on the street and racing people with power play or power crews, things like that. <laughs> Initial impressions of this turbo here uh, are, are pretty good so uh, it's a lot more responsive but uh, we hit the dyno tomorrow, and I'll show you the dyno graph overlay in a second, but we'll just have a little look over the car. Like I said, it's a factory LS1, which is really cool. Pretty standard looking. So manual gearbox too. Extreme twin plate clutch. So this turbo kit was done by Killaboost. I think it uses the factory factory exhaust manifold on the other side here. This is V-banded in with a crossover, the other side of the kit here. Pretty nice little ride. All right, guys, the car went onto the dyno today, and I have some pretty interesting results to show you. Uh, here's a video of the dyno, and let's take a look at the dyno sheets. Alright guys, this is the first dyno sheet we have here and it this red line illustrates the Borg Warner S480 curve. Uh, the blue is the S366. Uh, as you can probably see there, there is a massive hole here for the S480 where it, it just it couldn't get up on a boost just because it's so much larger. Uh, little LS1 couldn't quite spool it up until you know, a reasonable, reasonable RPM here. But I think the limit is at 7000 RPM, so this... Uh, RPM here should be reasonably close. So as you can see here, the AFRs down the bottom were pretty much line ball for both runs uh, between the turbos. So uh, there was no change there. Ambient temp was very similar. Uh, let me just jump out here and go to the next one. Uh, so what we've got here is same dyno graph, got, but we have boost down the bottom. And you can see the, obviously the reason that the power is so far down on the S480 is that it just couldn't get up onto boost the same way the S366 could. Most interesting thing I think though, is that they're making within, I think it's within 20 horsepower of each other at the top end here. So 409 kilowatts here for the S366 to 423.2. IATs, well there's only a 17 degree difference in IATs. The S366 is about 20 degrees more than ambient uh, with the S480 only heating the air a few degrees above ambient. So, so once up on boost here, the compressor is probably a little bit happier on the S480. One thing I will note though, with the S480, it did seem to have a little bit of back pressure at high RPM uh, and it would, it would tend to blow the wastegate open and uh, drop a little bit of boost. We didn't have that problem with the S366. Uh, that kind of suggests there was le less back pressure uh, than the S480, which you wouldn't think would be the case due to the fact that there's a larger turbine uh, and, and housing, but uh, it, it may be the case. So whether or not that is a product of uh, having to turn the, the larger compressor um, we don't know. So let me know in the comments what you think about that. Why the S480, the larger turbo, tends to blow the wastegate open. Uh, 
versus the S366, which didn't, and it held, held its boost curve a little bit nicer there. As you'll see, the boost down the bottom, uh, they're pretty much line ball here. Difference being the S366 just comes on so much harder. And this bit here, uh, that's where you can fit your bus gap. <laughs> yeah, you race these two cars on the street from a roll-on in second gear, and you better believe that S366 is uh, putting cars on the S480 car. There's just not enough in the top end to pull it back in. So This is a testament to Josh's uh, attention to fine details. He's got a thirst for the technical side of things like I do, and uh, it really shows. I mean, look at this. That's going to be a much better car for him to drift in, uh, roll racing, everything, going to drag, street car. Uh, it's going to be really nice. So I said it was quite difficult to find good info on this, this kind of thing. Uh, there's a lot of stuff about power, but not a lot about drivability. So let him be the first to let you know uh, that this is the difference. And this is what you're giving up by going to a, the larger turbo, the S480 over an S366 for an LS1 that made 300 kilowatts at the wheels to start with. Um, yeah, this is the product of it. This is what you're going to get. If you've got any questions, throw them in the comments. I'd love to know your own experiences with this and, and how much boost you're seeing at what kind of RPM. But do the dyno sheets match how it performs in the real world? Uh, let's go find out. Start straight up. Oh, it was a little bit nicer than my car. Anyway, we'll go for a drive and see how it feels. <laughs> I'll break boost it up at two and a half grand. Uh, it's pretty easy to see five PSI there, so it's actually reasonably responsive. Woo! <laughs> she moves. First gear, just roll into it from two grand. Jesus. <laughs> but I would say for a street car, that is a perfect turbo. Uh, the spool, it, it feels like it has similar spool to maybe a. Uh, Maybe a BA XR6 Turbo uh, with a bit of work done to it. Um, you can see a lot of boost from two and a half grand. Maybe very slightly slower to come on, but its transient response I'd say is better. I was straight back on in second gear and I wasn't quick shifting or anything, so I'm uh, pretty impressed with that. That's That moves really well. I'd say most of the time you're going to race people from 60 to 70, so we'll go from 65 here. And it's straight onto boost. And I don't know how that, that grips mostly. <laughs> That's crazy. I love it. That's 10 pound by the, oh sorry, 9 pound just then at 3 grand in third, just rolling on like that. Two and a half. Yeah, she's good. It's probably the kind of turbo I'd want on my street car. Yeah, that's like 11.6 at 3 grand. 11.6 psi at 3000 rpm in fourth gear from a roll on. It's not too bad. Oh shit. One thing we want to mention is that before with the, the S480, uh, you would never see any boost or really any boost on part throttle. Whereas now, uh, part throttle, even half throttle when I was driving before, we were making significant boost pressure just kind of driving around normally, which is, which is pretty cool because as soon as you want to get onto it and go somewhere, you've already got a couple of pound there ready to go to spool the turbo and the, the transient responses are so much better. So. Uh, it's definitely a plus for the S366. Alright guys, you've seen all the technical stuff. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Now we can go watch Josh, the Drift King. I'm going to call him. He's going to kill me for saying that. But check this guy out. He can drive. <laughs>